All right, this video here is to uh, help you prep your model for 3D printing using MakerBot printers and MakerBot software, slicing software, MakerBot print. All right, so first what you wanna do is make sure you have it downloaded. I don't know the URL address of the website it downloaded. So I'll just perform a Google search for MakerBot print. There you go, just search it up in Google. And there it is, download MakerBot print 3D. Click on that one. And there it is, download. It's a free download, works with MakerBot printers. And it's a free download. There you go. It's a slicing software. So the 3D printers do not recognize 3D models. So you have to bring a 3D model here into this uh, software, and it prepares it for you for 3D printing. It slice up the model. So uh, the term used to describe the, the procedure of creating the instructions for 3D printing. All right. So now I'm going to find a model for me to print. So I'm going to thingiverse.com. That's a website uh, hosted by MakerBot as well. So MakerBot hosts this website, Thingiverse. It's an online community where people go on there and they upload models for 3D printing. So I'm gonna go with uh, this panther right here. It looks really cool. I'm gonna click on that black panther there. There we go. So somebody made this, maybe this guy right here. Uh, WLAN Cabell, Cabell. I'm not sure how to pronounce that name. Uploaded it September 18th, uh, 2019. Uh, there's comments there on the model. You can go in there and read them see what the experience of other people was for making the for printing out the model or if you have any questions uh, people that liked it people that, that changed it remixes any changes there no there we go all right so i'm going to download this model i'm going to click on download all files right here there we go it's downloading and if you use um, google chrome like i do it'll provide a shortcut for your file down here somewhere see there's my shortcut right there so i'm going to open it and it comes up in a zip folder so zip folder, uh, it's a folder that has compressed files. So everything in there squeezed down. So it occupies less digital space. So I have to unpackage this. I have to extract it, I have to unzip it. I have to bring it back up to the original size because right now I got smashed down. So it doesn't occupy a lot of space. So that benefits Thingiverse because that way they don't have to um, pay for more server space to store all those files. Now I just open up the folder and it should pop up in a file explorer window like this. If, um, if you don't see extract all up here somewhere, up here up top, there's like a toolbar. You might get something like this. Look for extract or compress folder tools. Click on that, extract or compress folder tools. And then click the extract all. You'll get another pop-up window. Here we go. Now it's asking me where I want to extract this to. Where do I want to open this file? Where do I want to unpackage it? So it wants to go to the downloads folder. I'm just gonna put it on the desktop for my convenience. I can find it a lot easier if I put it on the desktop there. There we go. So what I did, I just changed the name of the path. So here's my username. And then at the end, it said uh, downloads. Then I was going to have it in a folder. But I changed it over to desktop. I deleted everything after the D. Uh, another option you can do is click on browse here. And then choose where you want it to go, what directory, what folder, what drive you want it to go to. You can choose your flash drive. Uh, or you can just use desktop from here as well. Select folder. There we go. All right, so I'm going to click extract. Uh, the, desti the destination has 48 files with the same names. So I think that's this folder right here called files. There's another folder called images, license, readme. So I've downloaded lots of things from Thingiverse and it's usually gonna replace those that already have the same name. But I don't have another file in there called uh, Panther. Um, well, I do have one that I downloaded earlier, but it's the same file. So I'm just gonna click on replace the files in the destination and let it complete through. There we go, cool. So here's this as evidence that I downloaded it. Let me go here to files, make sure it's in there. There it is, Panther STL, STL file. Close those out and go back to MakerBot print. Here we go. I'm gonna bring the model in here. If you could not find a, uh, something to print out from Thingiverse or just wanna just experiment, you can go up here to file and insert example prints, all printers, and you can choose one of these. Here's a, here's a shark right here, Mr. Jaws. Boom, it's humongous. Let me zoom out. If you get something like this, we just get gray. It's probably just a big giant model. Let me zoom out, spin the wheel on the mouse. And there it is. And you can rotate your view around it by holding down the right mouse button. I'm holding down the right mouse button. See, there's a build plate there. You can move your model by holding down the left mouse button. And if you hold down the middle mouse button, the third mouse button, you can pan left and right, up and down. So just panning. So I'm like sliding uh, around it. Whereas right click, hold down the right mouse button, you're rotating your view around it. So the actual object is not rotating, you're just rotating your view around it. Same thing with the middle mouse button. It's not moving, you're moving around it. I'm gonna get rid of that one. X key delete. Oh, sorry, delete key on my keyboard. All right, so this here is my build chamber. Here's my build plate. That's the floor right there where my model will build or will print and it cannot, uh, 
exceed the dimensions of this build chamber. It has to fit inside this little box here, inside this cube, inside the build chamber, or we're not print. Earlier was red because that model was way too big for that. So I'm going to bring in the Panther. I just download it. So I'm going to File, Insert File, and there's the Panther right there. So I was here earlier, so usually it might be over here in a view similar to this. Then I had to go to this PC, then desktop, so I can find it. Uh, files, Panther. Usually extracts the stuff to a folder called file. So there it is again, super humongous. Let me zoom out. Also, I can go up here to this folder, project panel, and click add models. You get that same window, and you can find the file that way as well. And then click on the folder, you're going to close it. All right, so I got to make this Panther smaller. So it fits inside my build plate here, inside the build chamber. If I start, if I start scaling it down right now, um, and then I choose the correct printer, it might shift away. The printer might move, the, might, the printer um, might, uh, or the model might move. It may not be in the same place as you had it earlier. So what's recommended to do is first choose a printer. First, you want to choose a printer. So that's what I'm going to do over here. I'm going to go to add a printer. And I'm going to click on add a non-connected printer. I'm not going to get 20 networks here. I do not know the IP address of any of the printers. I don't even know if they're online. So I'm going to go right here to add a non-connected printer. It gives you all the printers available from MakerBot Print that the software is compatible with. So if you're in my class at Santiago Canyon College, my 3D printing class, these are the two printers we have, Replicator Plus, Replicator Mini Plus. If you choose one of these other printers, that's cool, but we won't be able to print your model. We can't print those out because we don't have those printers. We have to choose a printer to slice it in. So it's going to create instructions for 3D printing, and you got to choose the correct printer for that. So this is a printer, one of the printers we have here. This is um, one of our most commonly used ones, Replicator Mini. So I'm going to select that one. There we go. My build uh, plate got smaller, my build chamber. I'm going to tuck this menu away there. There you go. I want to scale down my model. So I'm going to click right here on scale. And if this is grayed out, it's because your model is not selected. See, if I click away, it's gone. It's all grayed out. I can't do anything. So we want to do a select. You just left click it. There we go. Now it's selected. And I know it's selected because of that blue outline around my pan through there. Uh, the units by default are millimeters. Metric system. If you want inches, go up to file. System preferences. And change display unit to inches. And then save. And then it takes um, like a full three or five seconds for it to update and show right here that it's now inches. It does take a while. Remember to have your object selected. All right. So the Z axis, that's up and down. So you can see here, up and down. Y is forward, back, and X is left and right. So right now it's 36 inches tall. Uh, see the Y left and right right there, sorry, forward, back, 108 inches, this thing is humongous. Let me try two inches tall for the Z right there, so two enter. There we go, I scaled it down, but it's off the build plate. I can try to drag it over here. I can hold down the left mouse, the left mouse button on it. Try to put it over here, I'm not sure that's good enough. Let me zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Cool, I got it on there. Sometimes it'll scale down, but it's way out there somewhere, out in space, you can't find it. What you want to do is go over here to Arrange, and then click Arrange Build Plate. It'll arrange it right to the center there. All right, still too big, so I'm going to make it smaller. I'm not too concerned about the size of this Panther. Uh, if I do want it two inches tall here, from the bottom up, I can try rotating it and make it fit in there, but I'm not concerned about the size. So I'm going to go here to Scale, I'll just make it a little, shorter, a little smaller. So I'm going to try one inch tall, one inner. Cool, that should fit, but it's scaled down off the build plate. So you can see here it gets scaled off the build plate. Same thing um, when you change printers, it might uh, go off the build plate as well. So I'm going to go try the Replicator Plus right here. And there you go, cool. Well, that's a big printer, so it fit in there. I'm going to go back to the Mini. Oops, let me see Replicator Mini. That's a little bit of lag. Here we go, Replicator Mini Plus. Select and then minimize that. Cool. There we go. So I got it in there. So typically you would print your model in the very most center area. For our printers at, on campus, maybe you have the same printer too. You got the uh, Replicator Mini Plus, MakerBot, Replicator Mini Plus. And that one, including the Replicator Plus, the big one, they're not good at retaining heat. What you want is to print in a warm environment so that the object does not warp, does not unstick from a build plate. So we have these right here. So air is coming from all these sides here. And so there's a high likelihood you might get some warpage. Let me show you here what warpage is. 3D print, 3D printer, 3D printed, object warp. 
images warp edge or shrinkage there it is so here's the flat and this area cooled faster than the other it and then the rest of it so it shrunk right there it's not flat here's another object supposed to be flat this shrunk that went up and that's not second to the build plate sometimes it might push it up it might push the rest of it up up here and the extruder will hit it and knocks it off the build plate and you won't get a good print some other examples of other stuff but you want you want to reduce warpage and to uh, reduce the likelihood of warpage, you're gonna wanna get a printer that has, um, if it doesn't have a heated bed, you can have one of these newer uh, replicator mini printers. There's little doors here to, can, to maintain the heat there, to retain the heat, to store the heat in there, trap it in there. Another thing we can do, um, we, can, we can put like a manila folder here on each side, make sure you leave the top open, the heat still needs to escape. But you, you just, anything to keep it warm and avoid printing like at, um, in a cold environment. So because of that, I'm going to position the printer, sorry, the my model here, towards the rear. This is the front of the printer right here, where that little arrow is at. So I'm going to put this one in the back. Get into the other printer here. There you go. So over here against this wall, because that will retain heat a lot better if I print it near the wall in the back over there. All right. So I'm going to go over here to range. And for the Y right here, let me hit the plus sign. There we go. Uh, maybe rotate it the other way, because this here is still towards the front. And that's gonna that's gonna high likelihood of warpage there. So the that paw right there might cool too fast, it might shrink, it won't get a good print. So I'm gonna go to orient. And Z is up and down, so I'm gonna rotate along the Z axis just 90 degrees. I'm gonna hit the, the plus 90 here. There we go. Off the build plate. That's okay. I'm gonna go back to a range, a range build plate, back in the center, which is uh, typically the optimal spot for 3D printing. But since these uh, don't retain heat very well, I'm gonna put it in the back where it stays warmer. Let's see there, sit in the move Y. Oop, minus. I can also punch in a number here, so it's 36, and hit the plus, jumps over to 46. So let me try 45. There we go. Now it's uh, as back as possible. There you go. Now there's less likelihood of a warpage there. It's going to build a raft on the bottom of it to help it stick to the build plate. I'm going to go over here to print settings. There we go. Maybe you don't have as many settings in yours. These are here because I went to custom settings, and I played around with the settings here. So uh, the infill pattern by default, it's a diamond fill. That's a diamond pattern that fills in the inside. Let's see. Maker bot infill patterns. Here we go. So here's the infill patterns. So what happened when it prints out your model? It builds in layers, so it builds from the bottom up. And it builds two shells on the outside, two thick layers. And in the inside to fill it in, it just has these infill patterns. There's one with the cat, uh, Moroccan star here, hexagons, uh, linear or, di or diamond or um, hexagonal. Oh, a hexagonal would be this one right here. Here's a cat. You won't be able to see the infill unless you break your model in half or stop it mid print or look at it mid print. Then you'll be able to see the, the info pattern there. So I'm just going to leave that one as is diamond fill, info density. So you can increase the density of it, of it. If you do increase the density, it'll be sturdier. It'll be a little more solid, but it's also um, going to take longer to print and consume more filament. Uh, layer height, that's the definition of it, how high, how thick each layer is as you build. Shells, that's the outside of it, the, the layer out on the outside, this right here. Shells. There we go. Two should be fine. These other ones over here are just excessive. Uh, two should be fine. Four to make it sturdier, but five and above, I, I would say, is excessive. So leave those at two. Uh, so port type, make sure you add break uh, breakaway support in there. There we go. And support on the bridges. So this right here is a bridge, the underbelly here. That's a bridge. So the supports are for overhanging parts. So for instance, here the uh, the head of the panther is overhanging. So if it starts 3D printing, remember build, building layers. If there's nothing there to for the filament to land on, it's just going to fall to the floor, and then you won't get a good head. You'll get spaghetti. So you're going to need to add supports. That way, it builds a support structure here, so the filament lands on something, and you'll get the head. And then support on the bridges, and that's the parts right here that are bridged. It's like right there, from here to there, the the, the belly, the torso. That's a bridge. And sometimes, depending on the model, uh, the uh, the model itself might work as structure for the bridged area, but other cases it may not. These other options here that I have that may not be on yours. Let's go to custom settings. You can go through here. Roof, shells, roof, floors. 
you can even go here to extruder, change the extruder temperature, but I would uh, advise against that. Uh, you can also change the uh, retraction distance. This is something for, um, if you're using, you'd be using a different type of filament other than PLA. The default settings here for the extruder for most of these are already optimized. So um, you would only do that if maybe you want to make something sturdier, just change the shells uh, from two to four. <clears throat> uh, if you want to make something uh, smoother, just decrease the layer height of 0.1, so from 0.2 to 0.1. Also, to make it sturdier, you can increase the uh, infill density to 20% instead of 10%, and you can always go ahead and choose any of your patterns here. Just remember, the more uh, the complexity of the pattern, the longer it'll take to print out. Floors, I will leave alone. Supports and bridges, um, that's okay. The default settings are okay. Just make sure to activate them. I will not add any more rafts to the bottom of here, to the bottom of it, because when it uh, when it prints out, it creates a raft right here. You can remove it, but the raft helps the model stick to the build plate. I'm going to leave that alone. All right, so I got it uh, in a good position here. Uh, all of this is the default settings. I just activated the breakaway support and support on the bridge, so we'll see what that is in a bit. So to create the instructions, you're going to click on the clock right here, SMS and print preview. And if you notice, we started out down here choosing a printer first. Then we just worked our way up, scale, are we in a range? Uh, range just to put it back in the center. And then settings. All right. Slicing, slicing, depending on, depending on the complexity of your model and the, uh, the settings you may have put on there, may, it might take longer to, to slice. So right now, just creating the instructions for the model here. Cool. There it is, preview of how it will print out. There we go. Let me change this from up to layer. Yeah, it's up to layer already. Cool. Play animation. So the yellow part in the bottom, that base, that's just the wrap. Helps the model stick to the build plate. The green, that's your actual model there. I can see um, the two shells there. A little bit of the uh, diamond shape in the inside, not too much. It's not wide enough. Got that in there. Here's a breakaway support structure for the overhanging parts and for the belly, the bridge there. There's the tail there, it's not touching the ground, it's close to it, so it's support there for the ground as well. And then just layer by layer. I've also got to position this so that the, um, the panther is uh, standing on its tail, on its head, but honestly, I don't think that uh, the print will come out too good. You also want to reduce uh, the, build, the, num the, the space that your model will occupy on the build plate, that it will share with the build plate. This position is okay. They will print out better this way. I could have stand it up, but that'd be really tall, and it might be a higher likelihood of something bad happening. It might get knocked down by the extruder and it'll fall down, and I won't get a good print there. If it was wider, if the build plate occupied all this other space, that would not be good. Sorry if the raft occupied the rest of the build plate. If I was printing out uh, maybe three of these models, because I could have brought in three of them, had one here and here. The one over here will not be a good print, and it would most likely warp the, the edge that's near the, uh, the front right here would, more, would be more likely to unstick from the build plate. So there it is. So you can see the diamond pattern there now. The infill, all this is hollowed out right here. So just the two shells on the outside, and then the, that diamond waffle pattern on the inside. It's filling it in. Now it's building in the outside shells there. There it is. Let's pause this up, and, and just drag this all the way to the top to see the final product. There we go. There's my model of my panther there, low poly. So the instructions have been created. Can't do anything with the instructions unless I export them. So to export them, I'm going to go down here to export. And I'm going to choose the place to put it. I can go to the desktop and create a folder where I can turn everything in. Uh, panther. Panther. I'll just call it Panther. Uh, put your name on it. I know who to return it to if you're turning it in something to me. Panther, Adriel, save. And that's just the instructions there. And there's the um, estimate uh, time. Currently it's 701. It's telling me it'll take an hour, two minutes to print. And how much filament it will use? 7.7 .7 grams of the PLA filament there. So one hour, that's not too bad. You want to not to try to print things out that take too long to print because the longer that it's on that build plate they're printing, unsupervised, you're not looking at it, the higher likelihood of something bad happening. One hour is not too bad, doesn't use that much filament. So that gives me the instructions there. I just exported them out. 
if you want to save this project here, the MakerBot build plate with uh, with your model there, the way it already um, it is prepped. For that, you go to File, Save As. File, Save Project As. Um, it's going to call that one Panther as well. It'll have a different extension. Save. This one's dot print, and the other one is dot MakerBot. Save. There we go. So I got that one. So I got the export to print out the instructions, and then I got the other file save save project as for this. I I can go back to it and make adjustments if needed. And that's it. So remember, if you're using a MakerBot printer, Replicator Mini Plus or, Rep, or Replicator Plus, you want to position it in the rear so it stays warm. So key things to take away: position it in the back. If you do not have a, a heated bit, a heated uh, build plate, or if you don't have um, good heat retention, print it towards towards the rear anywhere the hottest place that you could find on your build plate. So if you have a different printer, maybe the hottest place is in the center. You would you would print your model in the center. If not, ours, uh, the Replicator Mini Plus and Replicator Plus, this part here in the rear is the hottest spot. Uh, another thing to take away here is the raft. So try to minimize the size of the raft. I can't change the size of it. I can remove it, but you will, you will need a raft. You will want to have the raft. Just don't have your model so that um, it occupies a huge spot on the build plate. It'll build a, build, a bigger raft, and it'll be more likely to warp, and you'll get that shrinkage as well. Uh, extruder speed, extruder temperature, you want to leave that alone. Uh, that's something you would tweak if you're using different types of filament other than PLA, that you will leave alone. Uh, the only setting change I would recommend if you want to make it sturdier, change the shell. Uh, count from 2 to 4. Anything more than that is just excessive. The infill density from, from 10 to 20%. More than that is also excessive. It's just un unnecessary. All right. So there you go. Thank you and have an awesome day. Thank you for watching.